Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we find ourselves in the mystical forest that has been home and haven to beasts, spirits, and forgotten gods for thousands of years. While the Haven Guardian slumbers, a nearby human village has grown into a city that is hungry to control the powers of the forest. Haven is a two-player game that plays in 30 to 60 minutes, it's for ages 12 and up, and published by Red Raven Games. You'll be battling for control of the mystical forest, where one of you plays as the city, trying to master the forest, while the other plays as the forest and its creatures, trying to defend their home. Today, we'll be doing a rule school, where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rulebook yourself. Now, I've placed timestamps below me in the description of this video, just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Without further ado, let's get started. Haven is a two-player tactical game where one player will be playing as the city and the other player will be playing as the forest and its creatures. Players will be trying to win points from the different types of elementals by winning a higher total of that type of elemental tokens. And by awakening the Haven Garden by controlling the majority of Havens at the end of the game. And you'll be obtaining those goals by winning battles by having more weapons than the other player which allows you to claim shrines where that elemental is and possibly even getting a majority at that point. And you'll be winning these lore tokens by having the highest total lore on the side. But you have to be careful because some cards will be going face down and if you go over the total, you'll bust and you won't be able to win anything. And players have control of the timing of when those resolve and they can actually discard cards to ensure they don't bust when the time is right. And you'll be playing lore power cards to help yourself with abilities to try and win the game. To set up, you're going to place the board in the middle of the table, and each of you is sitting on one of these two sides of the board. You're going to decide who is going to play which side. If you're sitting on the side that has the spots for the gray cards, you're playing the city side. If you're sitting on the side that has the card spots for the green cards, you're on the forest side. You'll then assemble the three elemental standees that look like this. There's clear plastic stands that you'll put them in. There's actually three extra plastic stands that you can leave in the box, but you'll put them in and you'll randomly put them on different spots, which are called shrines. Shrines are these different spots that have stones on the board, but you must place these three on shrines, which are these stones, that lead off the board. So there's one here, 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 and here. So you can place them randomly in any of those three spots. Next, you'll locate the four victory point cards. The backside look like this on all of them, but when you flip them over, there's four different types. There's a water elemental, a leaf elemental, a stone elemental, and a guardian. You'll place them off to the side of the board just like that. And then on the other side of the board, on the side, you're going to find the different lore token types. There's leaf, water, and stone. You're going to put them all the same type in a stack, and you're going to shuffle them up so you have three random stacks, one for each of those elements. You're then going to flip just the top token of each stack so that there's a number showing. Then each player is going to receive six shrine tokens and their ten haven tokens. The city player are going to receive the gears, and these tokens are double-sided. One side is the forest for the forest player, and the other side has the city for the city player. So just make sure each player has six tokens. They can flip them to the side that's theirs, and the forest player is going to get their haven tokens, ten leafs. Next, you're going to give each player their corresponding sets of cards. So here we're looking at the city side of the board, so that player receives all the gray cards, and the forest player on the other side will receive the green cards. Now, they'll both have a set of cards that has this triangle. Those are the lore power cards. The ones with the, each of the elements are called the offering cards, and the other stack uh, will be the seeker cards for that player. First, each player is going to look through their offering cards, and they are going to set aside three offering cards, one that has each of the different offerings, one stone, one water, and one leaf, and just place them off to the side like this just for now. Then, each of the stacks that are there, you're going to shuffle them up individually so that there's only those types of cards in each of the stacks. Then, each player will get their starting hand ready, and this will be one card from your seeker deck, 
and all three of the cards of the offering cards that you set aside earlier. So those total cards is four, and that's what you start with. Now keep in mind, these cards are secret from your opponents, and the forest player, in addition to what I just mentioned, is also going to randomly take one lore power card, so they're actually going to have five cards to start their hand with. Now you may have seen some cards that look like this. These are artifact cards that are not going to be used in the basic way of playing the game, so you can place these back in the box. Now you'll give each player their corresponding player aid, and they're double-sided. One side has the turn summary, and the other side has final scoring. The object of the game is to have the most points at the end. One of the main ways to get points is to win these victory point cards that we've set aside at the beginning of the game. These three about elements you'll be winning by having the most total lore, meaning adding up the numbers of each of the tokens of each element type and trying to have a higher value total than the opponent to win these victory point cards. But we'll go into more details later about how you battle and get these lore tokens. And you'll also gain points by being the Haven Guardian, and you'll get that by controlling more havens than your opponent. And looking at this picture here, you can see that the board is broken up into 10 different havens as numbered here. So you're going to be trying to control more of these than your opponent. We'll talk about how to do this more later. And you'll be getting single points by collecting those lore tokens we talked about earlier and by claiming shrines. We'll talk about how this happens in just a bit. Now the flow of the game will go back and forth, starting with the city player who takes the first turn, and in their first turn, they'll be taking only one action instead of the normal two. And then you'll be going back and forth between each of the players, and during each player's turn, you're going to be performing up to two actions, you're going to be then drawing cards, resolving possible battles, and then maybe doing offerings, and then ending your turn. So let's go through these different phases. So in the perform two actions phase, you can perform up to two actions. You're not forced to do two, but you have to take at least one action. Let's go through the three different possible things you can do. The first is adding a seeker. Now there's two different ways you can do this. One of the ways is taking it from the top of your seeker deck. Now when you do this, you must first say before you draw this card, which one of those elements it's going to be going under. And then you'll draw this card and without looking at it, Again, you had decided which one this was going to, and then you'll flip it just like that. So if you take it from your secret deck, you must say where it's going before you look at it, and then it gets placed in front of that element. In this case, I had said before I wanted to go under the leaf. Now what you're trying to do when placing these seekers is to try and have the total lore amount, which is the total of all the numbers on your place cards under that lore token, be as close to that lore token value as possible without going over. For example, we now have a total of four, and we want to get to as close as six as possible, and I'll show you more about how this works in detail in the resolve phase in just a little bit. Now you could decide any of them, but in this case I decided that leaf. The other way you can add a seeker, now again, you're getting up to two actions, this was one. For your second action, you can do the same thing, adding a seeker, but adding it from your hand. When you add one from your hand, you actually get to see what this is, because this is, you can see this, but your opponent cannot. You can then put it face down in front of any one of these three. So I could place it here, here, or here. Now, you can see this, they can't when you're placing it down, so you know what it is, but let's say we do like this. So I know what this is, you know what this is, but the other player does not. And keep in mind, with face down cards, the players whose side this is can look at these at any time, but making sure not to show them to their opponents and placing them back face down. And keep in mind, when placing a seeker, you always have to only place them on your side of these elemental tokens. You can never place or remove anything on the other player's side. Now another possible action you can take is to remove a seeker. Now when you do that, you can remove any seeker on your side of the elemental tokens, and when you do that you can discard them. Let's say I wanted to discard uh, this one, let's just say. And when you discard a card, you'll place it face down under the certain deck that that corresponds with, and you can never look through the discard pile unless a card tells you. Another possible action you can take is called playing a lower power card. And they look like this, and if you play that card, you'll read it and do its action, like this one says, inspect your discarded seekers and put one into play face down. So in this case, we could go through, and that's the card that will allow you to do what I just said. And after you do this, this will get discarded as well, unless the card says to leave it out until a later time. After you've taken up to your two actions, you'll be drawing two cards. Now when you draw two cards, you can take from any pile in any order, and you can look at the card you took before you decide your second card. Like, maybe we draw this one, see what it is, and then decide maybe to draw something else. Now, 
If you do not have an offering card in your hand, you must draw one because you always have to have one of these in your hand at least uh, to and when you end this specific phase. Now, if when drawing these, it's a card that actually says play immediately, you must then play this immediately and you'll place it face up underneath that specific element. We'll talk about how this plays into the game in just a moment because this is going to help these resolve to see who wins these tokens. We'll get to that in the next phase. And so if that did happen, you would then take a replacement offering card. And again, these are secret. These would go in your hands. If it was another play immediately card, you'd continue to play immediately until you drew one that did not. Now, if the seeker or offering deck is empty, you can shuffle the discard piles and make a new one. But if the Lord deck is empty, you never shuffle that and it does not get replaced. After the draw two cards phase, we're going to move to the resolve phase. And what you're going to look for is for each of these lore tokens, you're going to look at that column, you're going to look at both sides, and you're going to see are there three offering cards there. Now here we have a leaf, so we have a leaf here, a leaf here, and a leaf here, that's three. Now earlier we talked about these elemental cards that come sometimes you draw a card and you have to play them Im immediately on that corresponding lore. Now, this also counts as an offering, so this would be considered one card. But over here we have three. Now we're going to talk a little bit later about how these get played and when they get played, because it's in a phase a little bit later in the round. But here we do have three, so we begin to resolve this. Now, if more than one of these lore tokens have three offerings, you'll resolve them left to right from the active player's perspective. So when resolving, the first thing you'll do is flip face up any face down cards that either player has on their side for that lore. Then you'd add up the numbers on each side of the total lore. So here we have three, four, five. Here we have four, five, six. The lore value here is six. If either player's total lore value is higher than this, then all of the cards from that player's side will get discarded from this specific lore column. Now keep in mind, you can actually overshoot that lore number throughout the game. It's only when there's three offerings and that lore tile is being resolved that then those cards will get discarded if you overshot it. And that's one of the reasons why we talked about earlier discarding cards is sometimes you'll want to discard it so that you don't overshoot it when it's resolved. So in this case, if it was seven or more total on either side, those players' cards would get discarded. Then you'd resolve combat. You'd look at the number of weapons on each side. This card has one weapon, it's a little sword there. This one has two. This player has a total of three weapons. Over here, there's one arrow, so it's three to one, so the city player would win the combat. Now, if it looked like this and it were tied, like there was just one sword versus one sword, you'd look at which player has the most total cards on their side. And this includes seekers, offerings, and any possible elemental cards that might be there. In this case, this player has one, two, three, four. This player has one, two, three. So this city player would win. Now, if at that point it was still tied, since you're resolving combat, the city player always wins the second tiebreaker. That player will look for the leaf elemental standee and place on that shrine their token. Remember the city one, so it's on the city side. The person who lost this battle will place this on any other shrine in the, in, on the board. It no longer has to be on the outward facing ones. That was just to start the game. Now, if when placing the shrine, there's actually no more places that the loser could place this, it goes off the board. That's going to trigger the end of the game at the end of this round. Now, earlier, I had showed you how the different havens are sort of separate out the board. You look at these roads like this, and you know, this is considered to be one haven. Now, let's assume that when you place a token, you actually have a majority of the shrines around a haven. For example, let's say that elemental standee was here when we just won. Well, that city player would place it here, that other player would move this, and now around this, there's four shrines. The majority means you have to have at least three. So here we have three of four, and so the city player would now control that haven, and they would place their haven marker right in the middle of that to show that. Now, even if the forest player did not have their token on this shrine, even if you have a majority, meaning the other player could not take it over, you'd still place that token. Now, anytime a player has a majority of the shrines around a haven and they place their haven token, the other player gets to draw one of the lore power cards into their hand. This is not mandatory. They don't have to do it, but they can. So we just resolved the combat, and now we're going to resolve the lore. To do that, you're going to add up the total lore values of all the cards on each player's side. This player has four. This player has six. Four plus two. This player has more lore, so they are going to win the lore. And when you win it, you're going to be winning this token.
Now, in a tie for lore, six to six, you would again look at the amount of cards on each side, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, just like you would win a tie for the combat. Uh, and the whoever has more cards on their side would win it. Uh, if it's still tied, unlike combat, in a second tiebreaker, the forest side always wins the lore. And the player that wins that token places it near themselves on their side of the board, face up. Now this is important to the game because remember at the end of the game you're going to get one point for each of these tokens you have and you're going to be adding up the values of each element and possibly winning the victory point card for that element at the end of the game if you have the highest total value of that. Then each player is going to discard all of their seeker cards and their offering cards and the next token will be flipped face up. Now keep in mind, oh, this is just the same value, but these are shuffled at the beginning of the game, remember? And if there's any other ones to resolve, do so left to right from the active player's perspective. Now in the case that one player lost both the battle and the lore, let's just say the city player lost both of those. They get to keep one of these cards there and discard the other. So let's say they keep this and they would discard the other, but that's only if you lose both the battle and the lore for that. Now, after resolving, you'll then do an offering. Now, remember, you must place one offering card during this time, and you'll always have one because in the draw two cards phase, you always end with at least one offering card in hand. And when playing an offering card, it just goes below the stack. For example, if this one was stone, it could only be placed on the stone, and again, always on your side, and you would place it on the bottom like this. If you're playing a card that has more than one, it can be played on either of those, like the, the, the water or the stone. It doesn't get played on both, it gets played on one or the other. And keep in mind, this is mandatory, you must play an offering. Next, you go to the end of turn phase. First, you see if you need to discard down. Hand limit is seven. If you have more than seven, you must discard as normal. Next, you're gonna check for the end of the game. One way to end the game is if one of the stacks of the Lord tokens is completely gone. Like in this case, there's no more leaf tokens. The other way the game can end is if there's one or more elemental standees placed off the board. Remember, this happens when somebody places, uh, claims a shrine and there's no place for this elemental standee to go. If the game does not end at this point, play goes to the other player where they're going to run through these exact phases as well. But if the game does end, you'll flip over to the final scoring side of your player aid and you'll follow through that, which I'm going to go through now. First, you'll go through each of the elements and you'll add the total lore values of the tokens that the players have collected. For example, for the Leafs, here we have uh, 19 and here we have 17. This player has higher, so this player would win this. It's three victory points. Here, it's a tie, so nobody wins it. And here, this player clearly wins it, so they'll get it. Then you'll see which player claims the Haven Guardian for five points. It's whichever player has more Haven tokens on the board. In this case, the Forest does. If it's tied, then neither player would win this five-point victory card. Next, each player adds up one point for each of the Lord tokens they have and one point for each of the shrines that they've claimed. And whoever has the most points at this time is the winner. If it's tied, then you add up the total lore value numbers on each side, and that player is the winner. In this case, if you add up all these numbers, they're higher than these numbers, this player would win. If it's still tied, well, they share the victory in the forest and the city, learn to coexist peacefully. If you need further explanations on the lore card abilities, they're all listed here on page 14 of the rulebook that you can reference. And after you're familiar with the game, feel free to add any of these advanced variants on page 13 of the rulebook. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Haven and get to the fun quicker than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I've placed the link in the description of this video just below me, and that's the best place to ask them, because not only will I be notified, but so will Red Raven Games.